Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I'm going to be discussing a subject that often is confusing to people, and that is chips. What chips? Not potato chips or corn chips. The ones that are used on cartridges that we utilize on our printers. Now, I just want to tell you guys that I know I haven't uploaded anything this week, and that's because I took a spill on the ice while I was walking my grandson's dog, and I smashed the living, you know what, out of my right side. I almost broke my hip. Luckily, I did not, but now I have a lot of pain on my arm, shoulder, and my ankle, of all things. And, of course, that's the ankle that I literally shattered about 10 years ago. But anyway, so I've been taking it easy all week. This coming week, I am completely off. My daughter is taking a whole week off from work, so we will not be attending school, although I'm sure we'll be visiting the kid. Anyway, so chips. Now, many, many, many years ago, chips did not exist. And so printers tended to guess, if you will, how much ink was left in the cartridge before it was declared empty. And quite often, there was a lot of ink left in the cartridge. And Epson went through a lot of legal problems with this situation. And so they decided, hey, let's do something about this so that we can more accurately then sort of guess, still guessing though, how much ink is left in the cartridges before we are forcing people to exchange them and basically throwing away unused ink. Well, it was a little bit more accurate, not perfectly though. And so what would happen is that these chips, smart chips, if you will, had two types of code written on them, a read-only code, which basically identified that chip by its color, or basically the cartridge that it was installed on, by its color, so magenta chip could not be used on a yellow cartridge. That was, you know, pretty tricky. It would then, depending on the firing of each nozzle, how many nozzles were fired, how many times during a job, it would guess how much ink was utilized, and it would send that information every so often to the chip and write that read-write zone of the chip to allow you to see a drop on ink levels. And at some point, it would reach empty and you would have to change it. Well, it still had ink in the cartridge. And they went through some other problems as well. So anyway, a side note of the creation of chips basically made it impossible at that time, back in those days, for any of us to use third-party inks on any of these cartridges, which were easily modified for refilling, I might add. But it still made it difficult. Well, the very smart people across the ocean created resetters, okay? And resetters tend to look like this. This is just one of the types of resetters. There are many, many types. Again, these are all for Epson. And you reset by contacting the chip with those contact points. A light will flash, maybe turn green, maybe go steady. Whatever the case might be, every resetter works slightly different. So anyway, you were able to then reset that chip so that it would read as full. The only problem was, and it wasn't an issue back then, is that the ID code, because each color had a specific address, if you will, like an IP address, if you want to come up with something that we are familiar with this day and age. So the printer would see the same cartridge chip, in other words. Oh, it's the same chip, but it was reset to full. Well, back then it really didn't care. So it would accept that as a new chip, sort of. So it would show it as being full. As long as you refill that cartridge back up to full capacity, you can continue to print. Well, things got worse because today's printers, especially Epson printers, are pretty much locked against that type of activity. And even if you could reset them, it sees the same ID color code and they will reject it. The way it works is kind of tricky. It sees the same ID code and the last time, the last time the printer remembers that ID code, it was empty. So how can it possibly be full now? Right? It's impossible. 
and so it will reject it. Now, up to the P600 from Epson, you could, you could use third-party products and auto reset chips. Auto reset chips are these third-party type chips. They each have an individual ID code for every color that it uses. But when it resets back to full, it's still the same chip. It's just full. Well, the P600 doesn't care. The P400 doesn't care. But the P700 does indeed care. The P900 cares very much as well as the P800. You could not get away with that. So a family of auto reset chips were created across the ocean and thought to have worked. And they may have worked. They may have worked in the very beginning. But Epson immediately counterattacked that by creating a firmware that they then installed on every single P800 that they still had in stock. And so when you purchase one, it was unable to use those chips more than one time. You can get away with one time because it sees the chip as a new entity, a new color, for instance, a new yellow code. So it accepts it, but when it reaches empty and you attempt to reset it, it still sees it as the same yellow chip and it could not possibly be full. What are you trying to trick me with? You see, that kind of mentality. So. What to do? Well, Canon. Canon is our hero in this case because just about every Canon printer that we are currently using for photo printing, which is what we do here, can be either reset or continue to be used, even though there may not be a resetter. Now, let me talk about resetters since we're mentioning them. This is a resetter for a Pro 10. Pro 10 cartridge right here. This is full, so I cannot demonstrate how to reset it. You plug this into your UFV power source. And this is critical because most of these resetters from across the ocean come with like a 2232 round battery. You know, the kind that I mean, those little disc batteries. And who knows how long they sat in a warehouse. So by the time you get them, that battery may not be able to deliver full voltage and your resetting may be faulty. And if that happens, it could damage that chip. So from the get go, you should take them apart and install a brand new battery that you buy either from Amazon or down the street at the local store to make sure that you are able to deliver the proper voltage to the chip. So as you can see, there are little contact pins here. You will slip the cartridge in place, a light will flash, and then it will just go full. And in this particular case, the light will then go out. You plug this into your USB power source. Now you have a constant supply of power. So these are the best and most reliable resetters. And they only come for Canon printers. Some of the early models, including the Pro 100 and the Pro 10. So. That's the only way to go. So with the Pro 100, Pro 10, no problems whatsoever. But there's always a catch, folks. Try to find one in this day and age. They're almost, they're almost extinct. So what do we do? We have a Pro 200 that just came out. That replaces the Pro 100. We also have a Pro 300 that just came out. That replaces the Pro 10. Same number of colors, okay? Same print heads, identical print heads. There may be a slight upgrade in the inks. So the problem is there's no resetter, okay? Red Setter, the company that creates these red resetters, that's where they're called, Red Setter. You know, they're currently working on it. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. If all fails, we still can refill our Pro 200s and our Pro 300s. We can. Okay. The Pro 200, as it stands today, uses the same exact molded cartridge as the Pro 100 CLI 42. Okay. So, what's the difference? Those new cartridges are opaque. Normally, when we modify our cartridge for refilling, we go ahead and reset it. 
we're able to see visually as the sponge is absorbing the ink. And you have to visually verify that to at least give you some confidence how well this cartridge is going to deliver ink after we basically defiled it by removing that ball. That changes the hydraulics completely, okay? It does, and it actually drops the efficiency of the cartridge, how well it feeds and how controllable the ink flow becomes, okay? Keep that in mind. You're not supposed to do this. You're not, but we can. And if we do it correctly, we can at least maintain like 90%, 95% ink flow efficiency. The best flow is with the untampered OEM cartridge, period. So with the Pro 200 cartridges, they are fully opaque. How in the world are you going to keep track of how well that sponge is absorbing the ink? Okay, especially especially since you probably let it go empty, okay? At that point, this, which is invisible, you can't see it, it's opaque. This has gone to the empty point. There is no prism involved any longer. The optical prism was a secondary safety precaution that was designed onto this type of cartridge to allow a beam to shoot through, basically creating a light beam that can be detected, and when the ink drops and that prism is exposed to air, it changes the angle by deflecting it, okay? And that immediately triggers a low response, meaning that, hey, you're running out of ink in this chamber here, okay? If you're gonna refill, do it now before you start losing ink out of the sponge. The sponge, as you are printing, as you are creating a deficit, okay, is being replenished constantly by the liquid side. So this saturation level pretty much remains constant, okay, like this, okay. You draw some ink out, it drops, and you replenish, and it comes back to the normal saturation level. But if you go beyond empty on this chamber, that means low, and you continue printing, you're going to draw ink away from the sponge. And when you draw ink away and there's no ink to replenish it, air gets in, okay? We don't want air in our sponge, okay? We really do not, because then the reabsorption of ink will be diminished, and that is not what we want to have, okay, period. So how are we gonna solve this? Because a lot of you are gonna go ahead and run your cartridges empty. Well, try not to, first of all. But if you are going to go ahead and refill your originals, then you have to accept that yeah, you're gonna have problems because you can't see the sponge. So how do we solve that? Use one of these. Instead, you'll have to replace the chip. Take the CLI-42 chip out and put your matching color chip from the Pro 200 onto that clear or translucent cartridge. It will fit perfectly. We already proved that. So. Now you can see, just like with the Pro 100, now you can see how well or how bad your cartridge is absorbing ink, okay? And at least that will solve that problem for you because now you're not blinded. You're not doing this blindly. You're actually doing it as well as you used to do it on the Pro 100. For those of you who never had a Pro 100, buy yourself a set of modified cartridges. I have a link on my description okay all my video descriptions it's an ebay store it's not mine it's someone else's they have pre-modified cartridges you will have to take your chip in this case yellow yellow remove this yellow put it aside and install the pro 200 yellow chip on it okay now how do you continue printing okay i refilled them jose i refilled them but now now it's not letting me print beyond empty. It's telling me that I am empty. As soon as it reaches empty, okay, you hold, in this case, you hold this button. The stop button, five seconds, let go. It will allow you to continue to print from now on. You will no longer have indication of ink levels, but what will happen is that you have a little bit of a, it, it'll show like it's super, super low, okay? but it will not stop printing. And now you have to visually keep track of your ink levels yourself. 
Okay. Once you get all of them done that way, then it's going to have to be something that you do, say, every month or so, depending on your printing habits, how much you print per week, let's just say, so that by the end of the month, you'll know that one of those cartridges may be, may be down to this level here. Well, now you top them all off and you continue doing this every month. You want to do that, all of them at once, all of them at once, because you don't want to have to do that every two or three days. When one of them is empty, you top it off. The other ones you did not top off, you close the lid. It runs a universal purge cycle or printhead recharge or printhead priming, whatever you want to call it. It will use a certain amount of ink out of all of the other seven cartridges. So what you want to do is just top everything off. It'll run that one cycle, but then you won't have to do it for a whole month. You got to be fast though. You remove the plug, you fill it, plug it, put it back in next like that. And you got to do this within five or six minutes. Okay. And then you close the lid. All of them now are full. The indicator will still show that it's very, very, very low. That's what you get. It's not, it doesn't disappear. It just shows you a very, very, very low ink level. And then you continue printing. It will run that one priming and that's it for the next month, maybe a month and a half. It depends, like I said, on your printing habits, okay? So yeah, keep that in mind. You could do that. Now the Pro 300, there's no difference. You'll have to disable ink monitoring as well, one cartridge at a time as the time comes when it reads empty. With these, you can let it go empty because these have an internal bladder that holds the ink. These have a sponge and the sponge has to be maintained. It's a little bit more finicky. It requires the correct hydraulics, if you will. This has a built-in diaphragm that pressurizes against the bag, and then that will then deliver the proper ink flow to the printer. They're identical to these folks, okay? So you, there's nothing you have to do. You basically remove the cap and dribble ink in it until it reaches 32 grams of total weight. And that is it. That's all you have to do. And then when it goes empty, Hold the button five seconds, let go of the button. And at that point, it will just say, okay, okay, dummy, you want to continue printing at your own risk? Go right ahead. But we know better because we topped that cartridge up. We filled it, okay? So we know we're okay. I've done that here already, okay? I had a series of cartridges that were extremely low, and now they're systematically all going to the empty. I do the same thing. I do the same thing. Hold a button. It will then just say, okay, fine. We'll continue printing. And then I just fill the cartridge up to full. That's it. So that is what we need to do. From now on, that is what we need to do. There is no other way. The chips are color-coded. Remember that. Each chip is color-coded to a specific color. They are not universal. So be aware of that. You cannot mix and match. These cartridges are not keyed so you can mistakenly put them in the wrong slot although it is pretty clear it's yellow and this is yellow that goes in the yellow slot right not the magenta slot if you do that you'll get an error and you'll get a possible lockup of your printer yes imagine that so keep that in mind chips are individual they are not universal they cannot be used from printer to printer say different models that use the same cartridge no you cannot Okay, in this case, you need to have a chip for that specific color and that specific printer model. All right, enough about chips. We can go on forever. The chips are quite a development that just came about maybe 15 years ago. And again, it had its reasons for existence, but it also created some problems for us refillers. And I know they are relishing that they were able to have that as a secondary, if you will, problem. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Continue to support the channel by sharing, by liking, and by subscribing. We are close to hitting 41,000 subscribers at this point. So again, I thank you guys for all of your support. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>